Almost everyone has heard the age-old fairy tale of Rapunzel. Rapunzel was a European story first made famous by the Brothers Grimm in an 1812 folklore publication titled Children's and Household Tales. In the modern story, Rapunzel was a teenage girl with long blonde hair, trapped in a woodland tower due to a dastardly deal made by her parents and the sorceress who imprisoned her. Rapunzel's latter length hair was the only means for entrance or exit to the tower in which she lived, and eventually she met a young prince who aided in her escape. Of course, this is a watered down, kid friendly version of the fairy tale told around the world. The original story had Rapunzel either banished to the wilderness while her Prince Charming was blinded by the sorceress, or Rapunzel trapped in the tower for eternity, her hair cut and all means of escape rendered useless. Sounds scary, right? As depressing as the Brothers Grimm twisted fairy tales might be, the real world application of Rapunzel in the medical field might be even more gruesome than a teenage girl held captive in the forest or a man going blind by falling into a thorn bush. Introducing the incredibly rare yet sometimes fatal condition called Rapunzel syndrome, an end result of hair pulling, hair eating tendencies in humans that must be seen and heard to be believed. The tragedy of Jasmine Beaver takes us back to September of 2016 in a little seaside civil parish called Skegness, England. Jasmine was a healthy, happy 16-year-old student at the time. Her friends called her Bubble, withholding the ability to turn anyone's frown into a smile. She was intelligent, hopeful, if not for being a bit quirky. You see, Jasmine had developed a compulsive psychological disorder called trichophagia. Those with trichophagia compulsively eat their own hair as a result of trichotillomania the compulsive need to pull out one's own hair. Jasmine had been sucking and choking on her own hair for a few years leading up into 2016, as noted by a family friend. While it didn't cause many issues for her at first, it eventually led to much more stark and serious consequences. That month of September, Jasmine collapsed while she was at school, having to return home early to rest from whatever had paralyzed her, seemingly out of nowhere. A few hours later, she walked out of her bedroom covered in blotches, her skin flushed with red and rashed markings. Soon after, Jasmine lost consciousness again and was immediately rushed to the hospital. For 15 minutes, the medical staff attempted to revive the teenage girl with countless attempts at resuscitation. Eventually though, the efforts were deemed valiant yet futile, and Jasmine was declared dead from peritonitis, a specific inflammation of the stomach. Around the world, Jasmine Beaver isn't the only person to have met her demise as a result of hair eating. Thousands of miles away, another youthful teenage girl would lose her life just a few years after Jasmine's unlucky incident. Katia Jatsiri was a 15-year-old girl from Monclova, Coahuila in northern Mexico. Katia had been known to chew or eat her hair ever since she was five years old but went through most of her childhood without an issue cropping up. That is, until January of 2019, when a local publication in Kawawila reported that she had died recently from septic shock. Katia had been taken to the hospital after growing weak and unresponsive. However, much like in Jasmine's case, the doctors were unable to reverse her sepsis. In the post-mortem analysis, the coroner discovered a hairball inside of the poor girl that weighed over two pounds. And if that wasn't big enough, doctors would again be perplexed at a similarly tragic monstrosity in 2021, back in the United Kingdom. An anonymous 17-year-old girl, much like Jasmine and Katia, had checked herself into the hospital after fainting twice, in addition to severe stomach pain that had been lingering for weeks. The doctors first ruled out any sort of head or brain disorder before they recognized swelling in the upper abdomen. After a CT scan showed an enlarged mass of some sort tearing through her distended stomach and ripping the organ lining, she was immediately put up for surgery. In the aftermath, the 17-year-old survived with proper psychiatric care and a week-long monitored recovery in hospital, 
but not before a 19-inch behemoth of a hairball was removed from her insides. The young girl from Nottingham was much more fortunate than Jasmine and Katya, but all three present a dire warning for those who compulsively pick, pull, and consume their hair from their head. The consequences are deadly, just like the aforementioned peritonitis. While one of the three subjects mentioned went on to live a functional life after their trichophagia reached its apex, it doesn't lessen the severity of the conditions or the violent impact the main complication of hair eating, called peritonitis, has on the human body. Peritonitis is a medical condition that results from inflammation or infection of the peritoneum, a thin membrane lining the inside of the abdominal cavity and covering the organs within it. The condition can occur due to various causes, including injury, surgery, perforation of the gastrointestinal tract, and infection from bacteria or viruses. The symptoms of peritonitis can vary depending on the underlying cause, but common signs include severe abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, fever, and chills. Other symptoms may include fatigue, a loss of appetite, and a rapid heartbeat. Diagnosis of peritonitis typically involves a physical examination, blood tests, and imaging studies such as x-rays or CT scans. In some cases, a sample of fluid from the abdominal cavity may be collected and analyzed to determine the cause of the inflammation or infection. Treatment for peritonitis usually involves antibiotics to combat the infection, along with pain medication to manage symptoms. Surgery may also be necessary to remove any damaged tissue or repair perforations in the gastrointestinal tract. If the condition is caused by an underlying medical condition, such as inflammatory bowel disease or liver disease, treatment will focus on managing the underlying condition. The prognosis for peritonitis varies, depending on the severity of the condition and how quickly it is treated. In some cases, the condition can be life-threatening if left untreated or if treatment is delayed. While the mortality rates of peritonitis patients is relatively low, further complications do occur. This can include sepsis, a potentially life-threatening condition that occurs when the body's immune system responds to infection by attacking its own tissues and organs. This can lead to multiple organ failure and death if left untreated, just like it did for Katia Jatsiri. Peritonitis is also associated with a rare condition called Rapunzel syndrome, which surprisingly enough is not the condition of believing oneself to be locked in a tower or under the control of an evil witch or sorceress. Rather, it has to do more with the titular character's defining feature, feet's worth of hair, and what happens when part of that ends up in a young girl's stomach instead of along the watchtower. Rapunzel syndrome is a rare medical condition in which a person compulsively ingests their own hair, called trichophagia, which leads to the formation of a hairball, called a trichobazor. These hairballs can extend from the stomach to the small intestine, and then even the colon. The name of the syndrome is inspired by the aforementioned fairy tale of Rapunzel. While the syndrome may sound like a strange and otherworldly fiction, it is a real and serious medical condition that can cause life-threatening complications if left untreated, as seen throughout recent history. The signs and symptoms of Rapunzel syndrome can vary depending on the size and location of the hairball, as well as the duration and severity of the condition. The hairball is normally located mainly in the stomach, with the tail of the trichobazor found in the small bowel, or sometimes the right colon. Some of the common hints of the syndrome include abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea, weight loss, and a feeling of fullness or bloating. The affected person may also experience malnutrition, anemia, dehydration, and electrolyte imbalances, or vitamin B deficiencies, due to the hairball's obstruction and compression of the digestive tract. These symptoms were most notably seen in the case of Katia Jatsiri. In some cases, the hairball can perforate the gastrointestinal wall, like it did for the anonymous 17-year-old from Nottingham. This can then lead to peritonitis, sepsis, and death. 
the exact causes of Rapunzel syndrome are not fully understood, but it is thought to be generally related to the combination of psychological and physiological factors. Trichophagia, the compulsive consumption of hair, is often seen in people with underlying mental health conditions, such as trichotillomania, also known as hair pulling disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, which is popularly referred to as OCD, anxiety, depression, or trauma. It may also be triggered by stress, boredom, or just a lack of coping skills. Pika, the urge to eat non-food items such as dirt, paper, or ice, may contribute to the development of Rapunzel syndrome, as hair is considered a type of pika. Diagnosing Rapunzel syndrome can be challenging, as it is a rare and often overlooked condition that mimics other gastrointestinal disorders. The diagnosis usually involves a combination of medical history, physical examination, laboratory tests, and imaging studies, such as x-rays, ultrasounds, CT scans, or magnetic resonance imaging. The presence of a palpable abdominal mass, or a radiopaque shadow in the gastrointestinal tract, can suggest the presence of a hairball, but a definitive diagnosis may require an endoscopy or surgery to remove the mass and examine it for hair. The treatment of Rapunzel syndrome addresses both the physical and psychological aspects of the condition. The first step is to remove the hairball through endoscopy or surgery, depending on the size and location of the mass. In some cases, a combination of both methods may be necessary. Once the hairball is removed, the affected person may need to stay in the hospital for monitoring and supportive care, such as fluid and electrolyte replacement, nutrition therapy, and pain management. The long-term management of Rapunzel syndrome involves addressing the underlying mental health issues that contribute to the trichophagia and pica behaviors. This may include psychotherapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, medication, or a combination of these approaches. The goal is to help the person develop healthier coping skills, reduce the urge to consume hair or other non-food items, and prevent the reoccurrence of the hairball. The prognosis of Rapunzel syndrome depends on several factors, such as the size and location of the hairball, the severity of the complications, and the response to treatment. With prompt and effective intervention, most people who suffer from Rapunzel syndrome go on to live normal and healthy lives. Nearly 93% of all cases go on to be treated through a simple laparotomy, and 99% of those patients are successfully healed. Most of those who end up reigniting their trichophagia and suffering from Rapunzel syndrome a second time do so as a result of improper follow-up treatment. Those that are neglected and receive little to no mental health care after their hospital visit are usually the ones who return with a second hairball. For those that believe Rapunzel syndrome can be avoided simply by choosing not to eat their own hair, think again. It's a physically disabling disease controlled by a psychological disability at the core. If stopping was as simple as choosing between, say, taking the stairs instead of an elevator, everyone on Earth would be living happy, healthy lives, free of pain and suffering. The fact of the matter is, Rapunzel syndrome is one of countless bizarre disorders that is born out of trauma and mental illness. The more we can learn to accept, research, and understand the latter of those conditions, the more we can understand and hopefully prevent the former from taking place. Nobody wants to be stuck in a tower any more than they want to be stuck with a foot-long hairball trapped in their abdominal wall. For some, it's the most uncomfortable feeling in the world, and for others, it means death. So, maybe the Brothers Grimm version of the fairy tale is the most realistic after all.